Okay, in this video, we are going to evaluate a triple integral in cylindrical coordinates. So let's take a look at the plan. Uh, there's another video where I describe this in a little more depth, but what we're generally going to do is we're going to find the shadow of the solid in the xy plane and describe that region in polar coordinates. We're going to change in steps two and three every x and y that we see into polar coordinates, meaning um, x is r cosine and y is r sine. And then if we happen to see x squared plus y squared, we're going to be able to replace it with r squared. Um, after doing that, we're going to set up our triple integral, which will be a function of r, theta, and z. Um, and then uh, we're going to have dv. And dv is r, which is really from the polar coordinates. So it's r, dz, dr, d theta. We can use any convenient order, but usually um, I find myself doing dz dr d theta. And then we're going to evaluate the integral. All right, so that's our plan. Let's take a look at the problem that we're going to do and see what it's all about. So first, uh, we want to find the volume inside r squared plus z squared equals 20 that is below z equals r squared. So uh, if you look at this initially and you're not super used to using cylindrical coordinates, uh, you kind of have a problem, right? Because uh, what is this? And then also, when you're done figuring that out, what is this? Uh, so we're going to have to work those out. And so let's do that right now. So I see r squared. So r squared plus z squared equals 20. Anytime I see r squared, I can replace it with x squared plus y squared, which is the same as polar coordinates. Um, so I'm going to do this. x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 20. I recognize that. That's a sphere. So I'm in pretty good shape. So I want the volume that's inside some sphere, but is below this other thing. So I see r squared again. So z equals r squared. I'm going to replace it again with x squared plus y squared. And I recognize this. This is an elliptic uh, paraboloid. But um, since we're just going to look in a plane, it's going to look like a parabola. So what I'll do now is kind of try to sketch what I think this region looks like. I'm only going to do it in two dimensions because I'm not a very good artist. Um, and also, you gain a lot of insight by doing that anyway. So what I'll do is I'm going to look in the xz plane. So I'm going to let y equals 0. So I'm in the xz plane. In the xz plane, um, the sphere, so if y is equal to 0, I just get x squared plus z squared equals 20, um, which means I'm just getting a circle. And it has a radius of radical 20. I don't think that's super important yet, maybe, or maybe ever. So I'm not going to label it because I don't want to make this too messy. And then if I'm in the xz plane, y0, so z equals x squared plus y squared just becomes z equals x squared, which is a parabola. I'm going to sketch that in. And now think about what we're looking for. We're looking for um, the volume that's inside the sphere that is below kind of our paraboloid. So we want the thing, the, the region inside this circle that is below the parabola. So we're looking for this. So we're looking for volume because we're going to rotate this thing around the z-axis. So we get kind of a sphere with like a bite taken out of it. Um, so that looks like it'd be very challenging to set up. Um, but what looks a little easier is this region. So what I think I'll do is um, I'm going to find this thing, and then I'm just going to subtract it from uh, the volume of the sphere because I know the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So we're going to do that, or at least that's my plan. So to do that, I'm going to need to know uh, these intersection points. And uh, finding those is going to entail finding the intersection of these two surfaces that I was given. Um, so let's take a look. So r squared plus z squared equals 20. And also, I know that uh, z is r squared. So there's like the obvious substitution that I can do. So I'm going to do that right away. So z squared plus z is 20. Uh, this is turning into an algebra 2 problem. Uh, z squared plus z minus 20 equals 0. Maybe it's an algebra 1 problem. I don't know. Wherever you learn to factor. Um, I'm going to factor this thing. And then I'm going to solve. So I get z is negative 5 or z is, negative, is positive 4. But I can tell uh, that I need z to be positive in this case. So uh, this is an extraneous solution. So I know that z is equal to 4. If z is equal to 4, um, if I go back to z equals r squared, I can say that r squared is 4. So again, I get r is either positive or negative 2, but I'm just going to take positive 2 because it does what I need it to. 
So I think I'm ready to describe this region in the xy plane, right? So we're gonna revolve this thing and we're gonna, I'm thinking of the shadow of the parabola in the xy plane. Um, so if I think about that, that's just gonna be circular. Uh, you tend to get circles in the xy plane. So it's gonna be a circle and the circle is gonna have a radius of two. So that's at its largest. It's gonna have a circle that's radius two. So I know that R goes from zero to two. Uh, theta, I know it can go all the way around. So it goes zero to two pi. And these are gonna be the bounds. Okay, so uh, you definitely wanna think about that step a little bit, right? So I'm really looking at the part where it's the, the part of the circular arc um, and then the parabola that, that generates that kind of, I don't know, purplish violet region maybe. Um, I'm rotating that around the z-axis. I'm putting a light above it and shining it down and seeing what I get. I just get this circle in the xy plane. That's a big deal. You need to be able to really kind of work that out um, to figure out the rest of it. Now I need to do the z bounds actually. So uh, looking at my picture, I can kind of tell what's happening. I know that the parabola is on the bottom and the sphere, which is a circular arc um, in my two dimensional picture is on top. So I'm gonna use these equations and look at this picture and say that r squared is less than um, or equal to z, which is less than or equal to, so I wanna solve for z in r squared plus z squared equals 20 and I wanna take the top half of that circle. So 20 minus r, radical 20 minus r squared. And when you do these problems, almost all of the work is involved in finding the bounds. Once you find the bounds, it becomes just an integral and you just kind of like go to work. So we have our bounds. Um, they're uh, theta goes zero to two pi, r goes from zero to two, and z goes from r squared to radical 20 minus r squared. So let's set up our integral and see if we can do it. Okay, so um, we're finding volume. So we're actually just gonna do the triple integral of dv. And we know that dv is r dz dr d theta. And I'm gonna be able to go in that order because z depends upon r, but r and theta are constant, so I don't need to worry about their order necessarily. So I'm gonna write down my integral, zero to two pi, zero to two, and then r squared to radical 20 minus r squared of r dz dr d theta. Okay. So let's evaluate this thing. So a lot of fundamental theorem here. Keep those bounds. Integrate with respect to z. Um, just gives me uh, r times z here. And then uh, I want z to go from r squared to radical 20 minus r squared. And then there's still gonna be a dr and a d theta. Okay, so let's carry down. We get um, r and then when I fundamental theorem this, so I'm gonna plug in the top bound minus the bottom bound. So 20 minus r squared, and then minus r squared, and then still dr d theta. Uh, here I'm gonna integrate, so you might do u substitution on the side, like show some work here, um, but I'm not gonna do that. So I have r times radical 20 minus r squared. So uh, there should have been a negative two by the chain rule, so I'm gonna go negative one half. Uh, it's all to the one half, so I'm gonna add one, that's three halves, multiply by the reciprocal, you get two thirds, and then the quantity, 20 minus r squared to the three halves. So if I had done u substitution, u would have equaled 20 minus r squared. Um, and then I'm gonna integrate uh, minus r cubed, right? I'm just distributing that r from the step above. So minus r cubed gives me uh, minus one fourth r to the fourth. And then r is gonna vary from zero to two. And there's still a d theta. And we're getting there, we're almost done. Um, so up here, so still the integral from zero to two pi. Uh, this whole thing, I need to plug in two. So if I plug in two, I get uh, minus one third and then 16 to the three halves and then minus one fourth of 16, which is just minus four. When you plug in zero, it doesn't all zero out because of that 20 minus r squared. So we get minus negative, so it's plus one third and then 20 to the three halves. And then we're gonna integrate this with respect to theta I'm gonna clean up the integrand a little bit here. Um, so 16 to the three halves, 16, the 16 to the one half is four, and then if I cube that, I get 64. So that's uh, minus 64 over three, and then minus four, so I'm gonna make that minus 12 over three, and I'm gonna get minus 76 over three. 
And then there's nothing I really want to do with this here. So I'm just going to make it 20 to the three halves over three. And then uh, I never know how much like arithmetic to explain in these videos. Like we're doing a triple integral, so you would think not much, but you never know. Um, and then equals, I'm going to flip that because who wants a negative leading coefficient? Um, and integrate with respect to theta just gives us theta from zero to two pi. Could have done that in the very first step because um, nothing else depends on theta. So we knew we were gonna pick up just a factor of two pi along the way. So we get two pi and then this stuff. Okay, so we might be thinking that we're done, but then you have to remember that uh, what we actually did was find uh, kind of like not the volume that we wanted. So we're not done. There's, there's like one more step. So let's take a look. So here's our picture. Uh, our plan was to find the pink region, the pink, no, probably purple, find the purple region and then subtract it from the volume of the sphere. So we actually did um, this part, right? We found that. And now we need to find the volume of the sphere, but that one's a, a pretty well-defined problem, right? So we know the radius is radical 20, which is kind of nice because radical 20 is in that other answer as well. Um, it's radical 20 to the third, but it's still there. So we might be able to clean up some stuff. So it's four thirds pi r cubed. Um, so we get this and we have a 20 to the three halves again, which is really nice. Um, so I'm gonna say that this is uh, four pi and then 20 to three halves. Uh, so our volume that we're looking for, which we did all this work for, is going to be the sphere minus the value of the integral that we got. And I'm just gonna simplify that on the side and write it down. Uh, so I ended up with 152 pi over three plus 80 root five over three pi, which is kind of weird uh, because a root five showed up, but where that came from after doing a bunch of work is 20 to the three halves is uh, two root five cubed, which is eight times five times radical five, which is 40 root five. So that's where your root five is coming from. All right, we're finally done with this. So we found the volume of a pretty interesting looking region. Um, I hope you found this helpful and good luck.